Hey guys, I am Valentin and welcome to a new video on this channel. And for today's tutorial, I got the idea when I saw this amazing post on Instagram made by the very talented motion designer Handel Eugene. Just check it out in the description. His Instagram link is down below. Um, so yeah, he made this amazing abstract geometric mind bending shape animations, a couple of versions. Um, and yeah, in the beginning, I just couldn't wrap my head around it and had to figure out how he made it. Uh, in order to, to show you a technique for how you could create it. Uh, let's jump right into After Effects. So this is the animation that I came up with, that I experimented with. And uh, I also created a bit of a simpler version. This one just takes two layers, two shape layers, and it's quite easy to make. I'm gonna show you today. And uh, the next one is gonna be just an upgrade where we're just, just gonna add a lot of layers and a lot of expressions and mathematical dependencies to create this delay effect. As you can see, for example, when they start to rotate around here. So first it's a central circle, then the next nine circles, then the next 16 circles, then the next, uh, I don't know how many, I didn't learn that. I'm gonna continue to create this dynamic animation out of this simpler animation in the next video. Anyway, um, I prepared this composition right here uh, with my color palette. And uh, to start with, I'm just gonna double click on the circle uh, so that I have a perfectly centered shape. Its anchor point is at zero, zero. Its position is perfectly in the middle. And uh, now I'm gonna manually navigate down to the ellipse path and um, change it manually to 200 by 200, deactivating this link here. Now I can activate it again. And uh, this ellipse I'm gonna call main. My tip is always be sure to name your stuff. Name your, name stuff, your, stuff, stuff, your stuff. Because your then you stuff, can find it stuff. easily afterwards using the search tool, which I use a lot. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna duplicate this main circle twice. And one of them I'm gonna call circle. Um, and this is gonna be one of the sections, one of the side sections. Um, and the other part I'm gonna call mat. So you're gonna see why in a second. I'm gonna select both of those, group them, selecting, uh, pressing Control G. Uh, now I have this group, I'm gonna call it yellow. It's gonna be the yellow part of the circle. Um, navigate down, and now when I navigate down the circle ellipse path, I'm gonna change the position to 100 by 100, which is also the reason why I'm working with 200, because it's just very easy to calculate with it, to work with it. And uh, for this circle, I'm going to click on fill and change its color to this yellow tone. Uh, I'm going to select the group yellow and just add a merge paths function and change the mode to intersect. And now we have the first, you know, the first section of the circle. Then I'm going to do the same uh, three times more and uh, always go down the circle ellipse path and change the position this time minus 100 to 100 to set one section for each corner. Uh, select the circle, change the fill to this bright red tone down there, um, call the layer red, and just repeat this until you have all four circles. All right, now I've got my beautiful new redesign for Google Chrome um, and I'm gonna call this whole layer uh, something like circles. Hmm. And uh, now the next step is gonna be to create a null object, which you can do by pressing Option, Control, Shift and Y. Um, and I'm gonna go to, whoop, go to my effects and add a slider control, um, which is basically a slider which does nothing yet. And then I'm gonna name this first slider uh, circle rotation. Um, by that I mean the rotation of the circle around its own axis. Because later we're gonna add some repeaters um, and each of the circles should have its own axis to rotate around itself. So this is gonna be the circle rotation. Then we can have a main rotation, which is gonna be like the rotation of everything. Um, then we're gonna have the circle size, which is gonna be 
the scaling of the um, main circle itself and one more would be the section size what I mean by that is basically those circles the size of those circles because it's it makes a really nice intro transition if those uh, sections are scaling up and not just already there um, now that I've got all those four sliders, I can designate the properties to each of those sliders uh, and have a nice, a nice control. I'm actually going to call this layer controller because it's my yeah this one in the background uh, and the color palette. I'm just going to hide for now. And now I'm going to select the controller and press this little lock up there to make it always visible, even if I go into other compositions or press another layers. And uh, now I'm going to select this circles layer and type in uh, the size. OK. And uh, the first step is going to be the size of the circle, which is pretty much this inner circle right here. But it's also the mat of all of those uh, those sections, as you can see in this yellow section. If this one scales down, also this one should scale down for each of those sections, um, which is really easy to make um, with, with expressions using those slider controls. I'm just going to option click on this ellipse path of this mat and uh, drag it onto circle size. Now I have this beautiful expression here. I can right click and click copy expression only and uh, do the same, paste it to all of those ellipse paths and even the main one. Um, I'm going to drag it up to 200 just so we can see if it works. Yep, it does. And uh, one thing we can fix right now is uh, later on, if I change the background to, uh, let's say, some darker orange, you can see it, that there's this little white weird edge around it and that's just a weird thing about After Effects it renders the pixels that are in the same position as kind of this mixed mixed color I don't know it's uh, the only fix that I know about this is um, that for the size of the main circle which is the bright one in the background I type in minus one after this dependency uh, and now it will always be 199 by 199, maybe even minus 2 to be extra safe. And now you can see the border has more or less disappeared. Um, the next step is going to be the size of the sections, which is determined in the all the circle sizes. So I'm just going to option click this one again, um, drag it to section size and copy this expression again and paste it to all the missing size properties. OK, drag this one up to 200. Um, and next one is going to be rotation, the rotation of the circle around its own axis, um, which is basically going to be determined by the rotation of those sections around the middle point. This is also why the anchor point in the middle of the screen is very important. Otherwise, you will just get confused and messed up with those rotations. So I'm going to option click this one, um, make it dependent of the circle rotation slider. OK, copy the expression and just paste it on all those circle rotations. Let's see if it works. Yep, it does. OK, and uh, now one final step is going to be the, the rotation of everything. Uh, for now, it doesn't seem like this is any different from rotating the whole shape layer. But in the end, it will be because this is going to be the individual rotation of all those circles. And this is going to be the master rotation of the whole screen. Um, and just to have it also in this in this shape, uh, in this null object layer, uh, I'm going to option click the rotation of our circles layer, drag it up to main rotation and now uh, hide this. And now in our controller, we can pretty much control everything about this circle, which is perfect. 
Now my next step is going to be that I'm going to expand the contents of the circles layer again and add a repeater. And this repeater, oh, maybe let's do it 13 uh, iterations and offset by minus six so that we have six on each side and one in the middle. Um, and go down to transform and change the position to 200 by zero so that the spacing is just perfect. Uh, and duplicate that repeater and leave all the properties as they are and just change these to the opposite. So position X zero and Y 200. Now we have a perfect grid already. So that's almost, that's almost it, man. Now the next step could be that we can already actually make a first animation out of this. So I can make a keyframe of both of those size sliders, change them both to zero, uh, go down the timeline by maybe a bit more than a second, drag them up to 200 again, um, and press U on the keyboard to reveal the keyframes. And yeah, as we can see, this already works and looks yeah quite cool, quite funky. Uh, I'm gonna select all of those keyframes, press F9, to make some kind of easing just a little bit uh, and now I'm actually going to offset the section size by a bit so that we have more yeah a bit more more of dynamic animation okay and the next step we take the rotation um, and the rotation of the whole the whole thing and click on the stopwatch make a new keyframe go down by a bit more than a second and select 90. So now we have the whole thing rotating. Now what we want to do, we want all of those circles to go with the position of this rotation, but the sections should stay in the same orientation. Now what I mean by that is quite easy. If I make a keyframe here at circle rotation, bop, I can go down the timeline to that same exact spot and uh, type in minus 90, uh, press U on the keyboard, press F9 again to make an easing. And now you will see what I meant. Now those circles are not actually rotating by themselves, but they are going around the middle. Now my personal preference would be to actually uh, select the circles layer, type in rotation um, and actually type in minus this rotation here um, and copy that expression and paste it on each and every one of those single circles. Um, and now I can delete the keyframe of the circle rotation again, just to have a bit of a cleaner setup even and to have you know all the individual controls now i can rotate as much as i want and don't have to worry about uh, destroying the rotation of those circles and now i can add one more animation for the circle rotation itself uh, go down the timeline add 90 degrees uh, ease it and then i'm gonna select all of those size keyframes and paste them on the timeline again go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes so that we have an out transition okay and see how that looks perfect so that's almost it uh the last step is uh, is a crucial one for the for the illusion though um i'm gonna get the uh, color palette again because the background i'm actually gonna make this bright um, innocent color again and uh, you will see why in a second because now I'm gonna actually hide this one again duplicate the circles layer um, and highlight only that one so I can see only that one and I'm gonna go into contents and I'm gonna delete the main layer and I'm gonna type in um, mat comma merge and now I have, that's why I name my layer. You better name your stuff before. So now I can select all of those layers to delete all the mat and merge layers at once. And now I have these circles, which I can then fill with the poppy orange color to catch the viewer's eye. 
Okay, hide the color palette again. Whoop. And now the magic is that the background at the beginning is dull. And now we have the orange circles actually making the background, but they look like they are the main circles that the viewer should look at. Um, just watch it. Oh, <gasps> no way. So unexpected. And as we can see, it's yeah, it looks uh, pretty dope already. There is uh, a couple of bugs that you can see right here, for example. Uh, and that is because of the expression that we have uh, for the circle rotation, because all those orange circles actually are the sections of um, the, the main circles. Um, so they are actually not rotating at all, if you look at it this way. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to type in rotation and uh, option click on all those expressions to delete them because we're not going to need them. Let's see what we got now. Yeah, perfect. The glitch is gone as well. And uh, now I would even offset the animation, the in animation of the orange circles a bit more just because it adds more weight to the, to the orange circles. It makes them more important. One last step would be to select those circles and make them actually dependent on this controller and then I can even animate the scale. For example, we can uh, start with 140%, uh, so it's kind of zoomed in and then it zooms out until the circles are filled to 100% and then when it rotates, it zooms in again to maybe 130 and then it zooms out again when they disappear. Okay, so this is going to be maybe 90 even. We can do that because there's more circles um, out, out of the bounds because we added 13 uh, repetitions to the repeater. I'm going to ease those keyframes. Yeah, it looks even a lot more dynamic than it did before. And now, thank you for watching and please let me know if there was anything new that you learned in this tutorial by leaving a like or commenting down below and uh, yeah just experiment with all those keyframes and the new stuff that you learned today and mention me somewhere on twitter instagram or youtube because i'm really curious what you come up with and of course stay tuned subscribe for the next episode where we're going to create those really mind-bending delayed repeater effects with a lot of expressions and new techniques so peace and ciao